All right, so we've got that mapped out. Now what we need to do is we're gonna use our hot cues like we did with Stranger and set the hot cues to the points of interest. I'm also gonna go ahead and edit the metadata so I can write my notes in there as well. So let's come on over back to my screen here. Um, here is the first one. Uh, we had already set a hot cue at the very beginning of the intro, so that's already good to go. I'm gonna use my cursor to jump around to where I want to be for the drop. And you could start to see in the waveform like where the drop actually is. Like I believe that this is the drop. Uh, let's see if I'm correct. Yep. Okay, so let's go back out. Let me zoom back out. So here, I'm going to set a hot cue right there on the one, right? Um, and I'm gonna make that two. And that's our eight bars as well. Let me get to the other one. That's the other one there. And set that on three. And then let's set one for the last one. Okay, so I, I've got four that I set up. Now I can set other ones if I want to, but I've got four right now. And that should be good for me right now. And I'm gonna go, and don't feel like you need to use all eight hot cues. In fact, sometimes setting too many hot cues is a bad thing. Right? It's kind of like highlighting the entire page of a book. Now, now the hot cues don't stand out as much. So um, if you remember, what we went over here to do was we hit I. And now in this, I can edit the tag. So um, yes, let me go ahead and do that real fast. Um, I will put it in the album section and I'm going to say eight bar intro and eight bar drop. And now if all of the, the drops are the same, I just write that it's an eight bar drop because they're all pretty much the same. Um, and that helps me just keep, keep it tight. Otherwise, if there's an odd one, then I'll write, you know, eight bar drop, four bar drop in that order and I know that that's, that's first bars, uh, the first drop is eight bars, the second drop is four bars. All right, if you've had this issue where you're trying to mix two songs together and maybe it's not these two songs, any two songs that you're trying to mix together and they don't sound right and you've hit sync but they still don't sound right, it's probably because the grid is wrong and or the BPM is wrong. So I wanna show you how to check that and how to correct it, okay? so. Um, in this prepare mode, this is a great opportunity for us to be able to change the grid as it is. But before we change the grid, the grid is dependent on the BPM. So sometimes when Juiced analyzes the files, it might get the BPM wrong. With these two tracks that we have in here, it got the BPM right. But it's possible that, you know, uh, maybe every, every 10 songs or so, maybe there'd be one that's a little bit off or maybe every... 20 songs, there's maybe one that's a bit off. So the clear indicator is you're trying to mix them together, you're using sync, you're mixing them at the right time, but they still don't line up. Uh, the beats are kind of all over the place. It sounds like shoes in a dryer. It's probably the BPM that's wrong. So I'm gonna show you how to tap out the BPM. Now there's a tap function inside of Juice as well. I prefer using another device because I actually like using my phone to tap things out, especially if I'm like out somewhere, I'm listening to the radio, I like to use this BPM tapper. So I wanna show you this. Um, the tap tempo inside of Juice works very similar. Um, what I did is um, I'm just typing into my phone. This is a, an Android phone. I typed in tap tempo, and these are all the different apps that have popped up. Um, the one that I've used before is this, uh, is this red one, BPM tap. So I'm just gonna install this real quick. And the reason why I like this is it's very simple. And literally all you're doing is you're just tapping along to the beat. So you're gonna play the music. Here, I'm gonna open up the app. And I'm just gonna play the track and just tap along to it. Now my timing has to be good. So I need to be conscious of what I'm actually tapping. And if I mess up, I need to reset and go over. But I wanna tap this out like close to a minute as, uh, probably more than just like 10 seconds, right? Like I wanna be able to tap this out for almost a full minute, so here we go. And you'll notice that it's averaging my taps. So 
I still want to keep going because it's not really, it's hovering around 103. Right, like 104, 103, 102. Right, so if I were to kind of take the average of all of that, that'd be at 103. So 102.9, which is basically 103. Now, you're not going to have an odd tempo. Like when you produce a song, you're not producing that song at like 102.9. So it's most likely 103 beats per minute. And take the closest whole number. And what you could do is you can edit that. You can write that into the actual BPM field. And that will change the grid option. Or you come in here and write it in here. So let's come back over to my software. I'm going to show you this here, um, and I'm going to zoom in on this. Right here in this BPM field, I can double click on or I click on it, and I can change the tempo of this. So I could say it was 109. If I said that, it's going to change the grid, um, and it'll make the grid now 109, which will be different. So when I load this again, We'll notice that my grid has now changed. Like that's where the line should be. That's where the second um, bar should be, but it's not because now my grid is off. Right, so that should be here. So now, if I wanted to change this grid, what I could do is I need to move that that closer. I'm going to use this function here to do that. And you'll notice, or I'm using, I'm going between these, right? And you'll, let me show you what's happening on the. Do you see the marks are moving? It's moving closer. So if, in order for me to get all the way there, it's about 103 to get there, right? So it's and it's moving by whole number on the BPM to get there. And now that looks right. Now this, these functions here will just slip the grid. So watch what happens now. You see how the whole grid is moving? So the reason why I would use this is if for some reason just my grid was, it didn't start at the right point. So like here, this is a good example now. My grid is not at the right point. My one, here's my red mark, which should be the grid here. That's not where it's at. It, it, it's off. So let me move that there. That's better. Now we're, now we're good. Cool. Um, now, if you have messed that up, you can always hit undo, which is this little button here. Um, and it'll undo a couple of the steps. Uh, and you just keep hitting undo until you get back to where you want to be. And this button right here will reanalyze the file. So if you messed up completely, you want to reanalyze the file. Um, here it is. It's reanalyzing the file. And now putting it back at 103. Um, so all is all is back to normal. All right, everybody, let's talk a bit more about music as well. So um, inside of Juiced, we've got a couple of options. Uh, first of all, you can always bring in your MP3s that you already have. Um, so any music that you've downloaded in the past, you can bring in uh, into Juiced. Here's what I would recommend. I wouldn't just dump everything in there. Some of you are using iTunes. You can also um, go to iTunes and grab your music from iTunes to put in there as well. Um, I wouldn't put everything in here though because this should be music that you are set to DJ with which might not be your entire library right like you have full albums potentially and you're not gonna DJ with every song on the album you might have interludes and all sorts of like random things that you wouldn't want in here it's really important to keep your DJ library as um, sort of pared down as, as possible because in the middle of performing, you're going to be looking for a track to play. And if you're having to sift through all of this stuff, it's going to make it hard for you to find the right song to play. So um, you can bring in your MP3s. Um, you can download new MP3s as you collect more music. Uh, for a lot of people that are out there, you know, really DJs are kind of the only people that download MP3s these days. Everybody else is streaming. So um, this might change your habits. You might get into downloading some more music just to be able to have as a DJ. 
Um, you can also use some streaming services, though, directly inside of Juiced. Uh, one of them is Cobuzz. Uh, I personally don't have a Cobuzz account quite yet, but I've looked at the website and it looks pretty cool. Um, and it seems like you can just, you know, have any playlist that you would normally have inside of your Cobuzz account and it will show up here inside of Juiced and you can use it, which is awesome. Um, the other one that's really interesting that I'm excited about is Beatport Link. So if I click on the Beatport part of this, it will give us the option of logging into Beatport. So this will allow us to stream um, and also um, tie into such this big network of music that's out there with Beatport. So if you don't have a Beatport account, you can start a free trial and this will open up to another page. And here is the pricing. So um, based on how you want to do this, you may decide to go with the $15 a month one. Maybe you want to go with the $40 a month. Maybe, maybe you want to go with the, the biggest package possible. But you can see the differences between these here. Once you log into that, you will see your songs pop up there. Um, and yeah, I would take advantage of this 30 day trial too. If you haven't jumped on yet, it's a cool way to, to do this and check out this music. Um, and then once you have that, now you can start putting together some songs. So here's some homework that I want to give you. I want you to find four songs. You can use, uh, two of the tracks that we've already given you. You can use some of the demo tracks that are already inside of juiced. I want you just to take four songs. I want you to map them out. So if you wanted to start with Stranger and Imahino, we've already done that work. Um, maybe now just try to find two other songs that might go with that. And I want you to think about four songs that are within the same range BPM wise, right? So if you want to start over and you want to just find four songs from your own library that you're super into, just make sure that they are within this range of plus or minus four. So your homework is to get those tracks together, uh, map them out and start to set the hot cues. And when you come back for the next lesson, we're going to get deeper into other ways that we can smooth out the mix as we're going between songs. I'll see you guys next time.